cool, right on time. Uh, right, hi everyone. My name is Fabio. I work for Google in the Chrome OS uh, EC team. Uh, you can find my email. My username on GitHub is Fabio Baltieri, FabioFW on Discord. I'm going to talk about the input subsystem uh, that has been recently introduced in Zephyr 3.4. Uh, so let, yeah, let's open with the most important question. Why are we doing this? Does Nertos really need an input subsystem? This is something that's been asked by real users working on something. So let's try to answer the question. Uh, There's an overview of the API we had for input devices in Zephyr um, up until a couple of months ago. Uh, it was pretty much this. It's something called K-Scan. Um, as the name implies, it was designed for keyboard scanning APIs. Working <clears throat> perfectly well for what it was meant for, which is a keyboard scanning device with row, column, and key presses. Uh, the API was essentially a callback that would give you, like, uh, 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 where's the, yeah, uh, X, Y, and press coordinate. Um, so a few shortcomings of the existing API. For a start, you can only uh, register a single listener. If you're using Anertos, you probably want to do more than one thing at the same time. So that's a bit of a limitation. If you need multiple listener, uh, say, for example, you want to dispatch events to a USB channel or a Bluetooth channel or some other management thing, you need to do it at application level. And there's been some solution that's been developed. We'll see them later. Um, another limitation, the, the API has been designed for a keyboard. So it's limited into anything that you can represent in row, column, and presses. If you need anything, something more, uh, you, you can't use it. If you need something less, yeah, you can throw away some of the data. Uh, but yeah, at least that row and column are 32 bits, so you can have a pretty substantial keyboard. <laughs> um, some of the API became redundant and as the device power management stuff were introduced, so one thing it was using was the enable and disable function. They're not really needed. They can be implemented in, in a generic way at driver level. Uh, so yeah, even what it did could, could be removed. Um, this is some example of how the keyboard scan API has been used by existing drivers that are not necessarily a keyboard scanning matrix. So this is a CapSense Controller chip, it doesn't have rows, it doesn't have columns, so yeah, the callback is just zero, column, pressed, that's okay, not too bad. Um, <laughs> this is a more interesting one, it became popular when LVGL started to be introduced, and there's a touch screen, and a touch screen produces X, Y, and press events. Um, so yeah, sure, it's not, it's not a keyboard anymore, it's a touch screen now, and it uses the same API. Um, then there have been some other cases where we didn't even try to reuse the existing case scan API. <clears throat> for example, when, um, when we designed the GPIO keys, like the driver for GPIO with debouncing, uh, it hasn't been even tried to conform to the existing API. So what we started doing is defining new subsystem specific for a single driver just to represent the specific type of device. So if you go ahead in this way, we end up abusing the, the subsystem stuff and we end up with a proliferation of subsystems that are actually a single driver. So that was not good either. Uh, this is one of my favorite examples. So this is maybe a harder to follow, but yeah, so top left. Um, this is a driver for the quadrature decoder driver on the NRF52. Now, if you know anything about those chips, they're normally used for implementing mice and keyboard. So you can imagine that the quadrature decoder is used for scroller wheels. Now a scroller wheel is a quadrature encoding device with detent typically every two or four uh, steps of the thing. So it's been implemented as a sensor. But now the sensor API says that you need to have the rotation in degrees. So the driver gets defined with how many steps are in the whole wheel, but we really want to know how many steps are in a detent. So at application level, we read the sensor, we take back the angle in degrees, and we divide it by the angle of a detent to obtain back the step that we could specify directly on the device driver. So stuff has been developed with what we had, and people jumped through hoops to try and yeah, make what they could with, with what we had available. Um, there's been some previous attempt on uh, defining a new generic API to supersede case scan. Um, so a couple of examples. Uh, the, the, 
this is something that has been proposed as a touch screen API uh, because of some shortcoming of the existing one. People want to have like multiple finger, uh, yeah, like gesture types, uh, things like that. So the main comment is we can't have subsystem that are too device specific because we would end up with gigantic APIs that only a few of the drivers would use. And on the, on the opposite side of the spectrum, we had proposals. This was actually a bit closer to what we ended up getting. We had proposals that, that were fairly application specific. In this case, the, on the core of the subsystem, we were getting a request to implement stuff like long presses. And the, the, the comment is from uh, the ZNK project maintainer, which kind of knows something about input devices if he does keyboard. And it's like, yeah, like long press, why not double tap, triple tap? Uh, it makes sense, so we need something extensible, but we can really measure something that is clearly designed for a very specific thing. And in this case, you could guess it if you know what the guy was doing. Um, so we were ended up in uh, this kind of deadlock situation where the, the maintainer and the reviewer were complaining about uh, pull requests that were not making too much sense that we really needed a subsystem that was generic and couldn't handle this situation, but then we were pushing back requests for implementing thing, saying that we need a subsystem, and uh, the user, uh, a user is implementing a driver is not too happy if we ask them to implement an entire subsystem. That's not kind of a reasonable feedback for a normal pull request. They just want to get their driver done and move on and do their application. Um, it's a bit of a study of uh, what we have in, the, in, uh, in our environment. Well, Linux has a input API. Um, let's see how it works if you, have, if you never used it. It's fairly simple. Uh, so this is just some snippet of um, a driver that's fairly easy to understand. So it's Linux, ton of memory. So the first step is um, allocating a structure, device, uh, whatever it is, it's opaque, uh, it's, it's an opaque thing inside the kernel, it just does what it does, we don't really care about this. Then, then um, in Linux the device, register a set of capabilities and attributes. The stuff is used for dynamic discovery of devices, so this is also something that we ended up not really doing at the end. Then at the end of it, uh, we do register the device. This is what exposes it in the user space in the form of some slash dev node and notifying all the event system. And then the only thing that the driver has to do whenever it has to report some event is to use this simple API that just says report an event and whatever it is, there's like an event, um, an event type and um, uh, yeah, like two, two types and an actual value. And the important thing is that this is meant to represent every type of input device, including devices that have like composite, um, uh, composite entities, and that is done by implementing a sync type of event. So in case of, for example, of a touch screen, you would uh, report um, an absolute X, absolute Y, and then a push event, and, I'll and then sync later, and the sync tells the, the application level that the previous entities are synchronized between each other and they can be used together. I'll have an example of that. Um, yeah, so on the, on the user space, the, the API is pretty simple. It's just a struct that have the event type, code and value. And yeah, so this is an example of a mouse and uh, what I was mentioning, the second block is a diagonal movement. You will get two, you get two events for an X and Y and then a thing tell the system, hey, these two came together. Um, so, driver implementation, we basically decided to take the concept that we could reuse from the Linux one and um, simplify some part, make them fit the Zephyr model a bit better. Um, so, um, requirement, uh, we needed something that would support a many-to-many -many model. We may have multiple devices in the system and then we, want to, we definitely want to have multiple listeners, complex device, you may have uh, yeah, USB, Bluetooth, uh, management endpoint, like idle detection code, whatever. Zephyr is modular. We want the stuff to be modular. Um, so we want to have many callback. Um, listener registration at build time, it's something that is pretty important. It, it's a key concept of Zephyr in the uh, modularity of the project. Uh, the listener has to register and uh, get the callback inserted at the build time so that we can exclude the file and then the whole functionality goes away. We don't have to 
um, change any other code apart from the specific one. We had to be backward compatible. Oh, I'm going out of order. We had to be backward compatible with Kscan. Kscan is a stable API. We can just break stuff and kill it. Uh, it needs to be generic for represent generic enough to represent any type of input device, and we get that by copying the Linux one because it already works. And we need extensibility because there has been demand for the stuff like long presses, double click, that thing. Um, so this is what we came up. It's uh, heavily inspired by the um, Linux user space data structure. We embedded the sync just because in many time you don't need it and to keep it a bit uh, more lightweight, you can still send a dummy event with just a sync if that's what you need. Uh, we added a structure device, um, which is kind of the equivalent of opening a slash dev input, um, sorry, a slash dev device node that can be used to identify which device generated the event for filtering. Um, on the right, uh, so this is an example of a device driver is implemented. There's no registration, no capabilities uh, for it's not bad the device, so you hopefully know what is going on there. Uh, there's not even an API. Uh, there, normally, Zephyr devices have a subset of functions that the device has to register. We didn't need to put anything in this point. Power management stuff is, can be handled separately. So, yeah, that, that's all we did. So, um, a device can just start, enable itself and then start sending um, report using um, those API, which are uh, pretty much a copy of the Linux one. And they have to specify a device node, if available, uh, and then, yeah, the code, the type, and the value. And then the synchronization bit is, uh, include, is bound with any other event. And there's a timeout thing that can be used depending on how the uh, actual event processing is implemented. I'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, that's it. So this is an example of uh, a device that has to report, multi, that has to send multiple reports that are synchronized, and this is specifically how touchscreen can be implemented. In this situation, you send uh, a couple of values for the X and Y touch, and then for the third one, you only for only on the last one you enable the sync, and then the application level is going to see the sync. It's going to cache the previous value, see the sync, and when you send the sync, it understands that the previous values are stable and they can be used. Um, the, uh, the 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 application API is very simple. So you just register a callback, and the the callback is registered with a macro, and that is processed as build time, as I said. So there's nothing else to do. Uh, the first parameter is an optional the struct device pointer, and that is the only type of filtering that uh, we provide. Any other, any more complicated filtering has to, has to be done at the application level, just to keep it simple and avoid having complex stuff in the in, in the callback data structure. Uh, and yeah, no subsystem API. Uh, another thing that Linux does that we did not do. In the Zephyr one, is Linux has uh, duplicate, ev duplicate event suppression. If you register a driver and you keep sending the same event over and over again, it doesn't get processed if if it doesn't change. This is very expensive memory-wise. Linux has dynamic memory, so that's easy for them, but we don't have that. So there's two modes of operation right now. It's probably going to be more later. Uh, so synchronous, it's super lightweight. Basically, it, it falls back to the previous case, case can situation. Uh, when the caller, when the driver reports an event or any other type of code reports an event, all the callback gets called in the same context. Um, so the, yeah, this is the, the lighter weight mode of operation. And the, the thread, in the thread mode, the, the system spawns a thread automatically and then all the events are put in a message queue and they are processed asynchronously in a dedicated thread. So this can be used if the if some of the callback need to sleep or do some more complex operation, so here here's the idea with this. Um, if you're dealing with a very simple application, you want a minimum overhead. You don't really want to have a dedicated thread for this. Maybe you just have a couple of buttons that you need debouncing. Well, just have a callback, and typically these are executed in the in the work queue anyway. So you can use the synchronous mode. If you have an application that is doing something more more complex and may need to sleep or lose a bit more time. 
um, in the callback, you can use the thread, you don't have to instance your own thread. But then the more complex type of application is where you probably have an event system that you wanna uh, connect to, and in this case, you just want the, the simplest way possible of, in, of taking event back from the input subsystem and injecting them into your own uh, event manager, and that is how you would, uh, you would fall back using the synchronous mode. So case scan compatibility, so this, this API can repre represent case scan devices just fine. There's like just, there's, there's only a row column indicator and, uh, and, and a push. So we, what we did to maintain compatibility was to add this case scan input translator node. And this is documentation in, um, in the DTS binding and it can just be added to an existing device node and then we can point the chosen keyboard scan um, handle to the new one and existing application are gonna, or are gonna keep working unmodified. So what we're doing right now is going through the existing driver that should like touch screen, well, all of them in, in practice, moving them into the input subsystem, looking for all the board where these were instantiated and do all the magic for this thing to work so the samples work out of the box, nothing should break. If you have a downstream application, you have to do this to, for that to keep working. Um, this is how the case comp compatibility implementation work, and it shows the bit I mentioned about multiple entities synchronized. So it, 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 it's very simple. Like you take the event, you save it, and if you know that you have to process multiple ones, you only trigger the downstream event when the synchronization bit is set. So the previous one can come out in, in, in any order as long as the sync is at the end. Uh, extensibility, um, nothing special. In the end, the, the codes are just numbers, so we just decided to reserve a range of those that can be used for vendor-specific stuff, and then you can put whatever you need in that. Um, filter, so this was the, the answer of that comment you saw previously in one of the proposed implementation. So there shouldn't be um, application-specific features at subsystem level, right? That doesn't make any sense. But we should have a solution for implementing them cleanly and in a reusable way because this is what we do. Uh, so this was, this was the proposal. Um, the Navin stops you from taking events and producing more events. So this is something that we upstream to cover the specific case that was requested in the previous implementation for having like long press events. I mean, it's kind of something that is useful, but it was mostly provided as a demo of what you should do on your application if you need to generate more complex event. And, uh, and it's reusable code. So in your device tree, you can instantiate one of um, this block, and this is gonna generate the code that is gonna take the input device from a real device and then generate more input events as a reaction, and that's how you can, you can implement long press in, in a more complex way. Uh, why are we gonna accept upstream on that front? I'm not sure, we'll have to discuss, are we gonna get like a longer press, quadruple press, triple click, probably not, but it, it, it's good to have it as a reference and it does testing as well, so it shows how to do testing. Um, yeah, so that is it, it's a small parenthesis on event system, this was the main topic of conversation during the review of the proposal. Um, so essentially the subsystem is implementing its own mini lightweight event, many-to-many -many event system. Uh, the obvious question was, why not using ZBus directly? And uh, the ZBus is the official Zephyr message bus. Uh, it's been introduced recently. There's like a review project that uses it. And um, yeah, it, it, if that makes sense, uh, we decided not to have Direct integration, mainly because there are applications out in the wild that uses their own um, event subsystem, and it would have been a bit awkward to force everybody to another event system just so that they can send stuff from an event system to another event system. Um, but this is our event system for the project, so we're, going, we're probably gonna have a third mode um, in addition to Synchronos and uh, Thread, and mm, we're gonna make it easy, we're gonna, um, first party support for sending input event through the ZBus system, and then the application can use it. 
the other two that have been looked into is obviously the ZNK one. So if you're not familiar, this is a fairly popular project for mechanical, the ZNK stands for Sensor Zephyr Mechanical Keyboard. So they the, the obviously figure something out on how to do keyboard. And um, yeah, we, we, we looked into this um, interesting thing about this uh, message system is that it used dynamic memory. And what they do for input management is that they take the event from K-Scan, they put it in a queue, and then they send it down the line, and the event system is uh, synchronous. So this, should, this is pretty much what the subsystem does anyway, and it should be really easy to integrate. Um, yeah, another detail I forgot to talk about is the out of memory handling strategy, or lack of thereof. Um, yeah, this happens every time you press a button. <laughs> it's fine. Then yeah, the other one, um, the other system that uh, we looked into is the Nordic Connect SDK, because again, this is very popular for, for building my keyboard. Um, yeah, same story, uh, synchronous system, dynamic memory. Um, yeah, this one uses the free memory quickly strategy, if something goes wrong, um, sys reboot. Um, <laughs> apart from that, there, there's no case scan integration because for some reason the example that they have for the Nordic desktop does not use case scan, they have their own code. But again, um, yeah, same story. Like, um, if they want to integrate, they could uh, simply get a synchronous handler and inject uh, events back. Okay, um, so what's next for the subsystem? So, well, what do we have now? Um, yeah, the subsystem is upstream, it's usable, it landed in 3.4. There is one example filter for long press. We ported over a bunch of drivers. Uh, I think there's a new one since a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah, we're, we're working on it. Uh, once the driver have been ported, we yeah, will look into ZBus integration. Maybe Rodrigo will send some patch for that and we can move at the same time. Uh, I'm personally working on some uh, common code for keyboard scanning matrices. It would be brilliant if you could use that for ZMK as well down the road whenever they'll manage to uprive two, three, four, or whatever. LVGL, um, we have LVGL as a module. Right now it takes case scan event, it works with the compatibility driver. We want it to take input event natively, and then we could also not only use touchscreen, but also like encoder wheels and buttons, I'll be jealous as some fancy stuff that now we can support. Um, so we'll work on that, and then ultimately we want to deprecate K-Scan. Um, I don't own every possible touchscreen display evaluation board in the market, I'm trying really hard, but um, I don't, so yeah, if you can, if you own one and can help out, sending patches or testing out, that would be, that would be cool. And yeah, that's it. If you have any question or, or any input. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just, well actually I have a question as well. Uh, just very briefly, the, uh, the thread mode versus, versus the synchronous yeah. mode and adding ZBuzz is a great idea as, a, as an option. And then one more suggestion, if you wanna get inspired as well in the Bluetooth subsystem for events, what we do is we also support providing your own work queue because some, some mm -hmm. applications have their own work queue and you wanna reuse that to process things like Bluetooth events or maybe uh, uh, input events. And the other one is uh, why not also uh, also provide the, the possibility of using the system work here as well. In some yeah. cases that might work. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, most, mm, I think all of the events that we have right now in, in, in the driver already start from the work queue, but it would be, it would be a great one, especially because it would, then it would mimic exactly what ZMK does. And uh, yeah, no, good to know. Um, yeah, like, okay. like I, I'll, I'll expect a PR on my desk by Monday morning. <laughs> thank, thank you, Carlos. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks for picking uh, Linux as the as the source of inspiration. Cheers. I think that's a good Cheers. job. That's a easy way of getting stuff approved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're already doing it, so <laughs> can't yeah. be that bad, right? <laughs> uh, I did. I was uh, some intimately familiar with some pieces of the Linux input stack, doing drivers for graphics tablets. You know, drawing table in the Digiment project, and uh, I, I'm curious. Like, I didn't notice any way to discover the extents of an absolute position in device, like the 
ABS, ABS X max and X mean, you know, like that. that. That's what the capabilities are. Oh, did, I, did I miss that? Yeah, let me, let me, let me try to find it back. Um, the bits where it says uh, absolute tax and what, sorry, where is that? No, that's not the right one. This is the right one. The one that, where it says absolute, uh, up, um, yeah, input a set ABS params, that 0, 2, 55 are the minimum and maximum for the specific axes. But we don't have it in Zephyr anyway. this is uh, Rx, this ABS Rx. It, yeah, Rx and Ry are just that, well, X and Y. Oh, okay, well, I, I see that it's handled. And then the user is able to query that. The, from the user yeah, when you when you when you open a device on slash dev, you get this one dumped into your file descriptor. Oh, okay, cool, thanks. Uh, just just one comment, frustration with the Linux uh, input stack on my side that would be nice to avoid is that there is some protocols that are kind of out of band, like pieces of the input stack are out of band regarding that interface, the EV dev interface in the Linux where things like capabilities and how to interpret actually the event stream are discovered through various like USB IDs yeah. and D the, yeah, DBAS, all that stuff. Like, like, and that's, I understand what's done, why is that is done, but it would be nice to have these things documented. And I'm sure you will come up with things that are like, you know, don't fit the existing protocol later. So yeah, like but the, the big part when you try to use that actually is trying to figure out how, what, what is happening, why this is working, why this is not working. So yeah. straight from the get-go, like I would ask to document those cases. Yeah, so. but for Zephyr, you go with the assumption that the system is known at some, like we, we don't have, excuse me, we don't have capabilities in Zephyr, right, so far at least. But yeah, yeah, yeah in Linux is a bit of a different story, right, because you can, like, whatever can happen. Yeah, yeah. Just just saying that like this protocol probably going to last you a long time, but once oh, yeah. once you step out of that, that's better be documented. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. Thanks for coming for a comment. Hey Fabio, um, <clears throat> uh, great work. I actually remember reviewing this, uh, but it's been so long now that I can yeah. barely have to ask questions. There's a refresher, but good. Um, so first of all, uh, just to comment on the, you know how you were mentioning the K malloc situation inside of the macro? Yeah. Uh, I, what I would do there is just externalize it and have a generic allocator passed in. And then mm -hmm. it's just like a functor or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. And then you can use like, you know, fixed size pool or whatever. Mm. But um, the other one is like, why, why are we deprecating K-scan? Can you just remind me? I have no idea. Why, oh. why not? Oh, okay. I'm actually, I don't know, I'm fine with keeping it. No, I think the, the, the conversation we were having during the proposal was why having two API that can oh. do the same thing. I, there's, there's no reason for, like, we don't have to kill it. <laughs> and, it, uh, it would be awkward. We can just put a message say, hey, don't write new case scan driver. But no, we could keep it. It's a conversation we can have down the road. I just thought I'd throw another one out there for yeah. an idea. Uh, just in case like, you need something to do because you have infinite bandwidth. Um, of course. <laughs> uh, and I got a reminder from uh, Maxim, he's one of my metamates, uh, uh, swiping, swiping support. Um, so not a single character at a time, but like you do an FFT on a pattern on a touch screen, yeah. then you get a phrase of some kind. Just, uh, yeah, I think if you, yeah, if you could do some, some clever filtering and, and make a point that it could be useful for multiple for other projects, That'd be a good selling point for sure. And yeah, the inspiration for that was kind of the input input library, something some, something I can't remember. Gerard sent me the link, and I thought this is cool. Let's do something like that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Or the, it could be a module for all of this stuff that would also work. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Cool. If there's no other question. Thank you.